this is a, I don't know if you call it fun. Yeah, we'll call it fun. It's a fun argument because I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I do too. <laughs> and it's, it's neat the way you step through it. Um, and we'll do that. But before we do, let's go ahead and get the basic argument structure sort of on the table. Yeah. And I have it here. I'll put it on the screen if you want to talk through it. Yeah. So usually when someone gives a version of the manipulation argument against compatibilism, they start with a case of manipulation and then try to argue from the agent, the manipulated agent's non-responsibility to incompatibilism as the conclusion. So you give a case where an agent is manipulated into doing something. And then the first premise is based on this case is the manipulated agent is not morally responsible for their action. And then, and this is maybe the trickier part, you try to argue that um, there's no relevant difference between being manipulated in the way that the manipulated agent is in the case, no relevant difference between that and just being determined, being determined by factors beyond your control. And so if there's no relevant difference, and if the manipulated agent is not responsible, then ordinary determined agents are not responsible. And so the conclusion is, you know, ordinary agents in naturally deterministic worlds, that is worlds with deterministic laws of nature, are not responsible for anything they do, which is to say that uh, natural compatibilism is false or that natural incompatibilism is true. Um, I don't know if it's helpful to go into um, uh, and, you know, any particular example of a manipulated agent. There are a couple of different main types of manipulation uh, cases. Uh, that get used in this argument. Um, one, I, I guess one kind of goes back to some of Dirk Parabim's work. He gives a four case argument where he kind of argues from a really, really uh, kind of like hands-on case of manipulation through a series of cases to just the last one being an ordinary deterministic world. And he says, there's no relevant difference between any two of these cases. And so if you think the hands-on manipulation is uh, undermining responsibility, so should a sort of manipulation-free deterministic world. Um, the one that I think might be more interesting and helpful for this paper is uh, due to uh, Al Mealy. It's called the zygote argument, and it's a version of the manipulation argument that's based on this case where a goddess, Diana, wants for something to happen 30 years from now. And so she creates a zygote and implants it in this agent Mary, knowing, because she's in a deterministic universe, that this zygote is going to develop. Um, Mary's going to name her kid Ernie. Ernie is going to grow up. And then, you know, 30 years from when Diana starts this process, Ernie's going to bring about the thing that, that Diana wants him to. And so in that case, a lot of people think, well, if Ernie has been sort of made to do this thing, bring about this uh, event in 30 years, it looks like he's not free and responsible with respect to bringing about that event. And so... Uh, you know, if, if he's not responsible, is there any difference between, you know, Ernie having been set up in this way by Diana in this deterministic world and someone who's just like Ernie, but who is not created by a goddess in this way, who just comes about in the normal way. Um, sometimes people refer to this agent as Bernie, right? So Ernie's the one who was created by Diana. Bernie is someone who has the exact same life as Ernie makes all the same decisions and choices, ends up doing the same thing, you know, 30 years after his zygote is created. The only difference is he's not created by a goddess in order to bring about this event. Rather, he just uh, is, comes about in the usual way. And so some people think, well, if there's no difference at any point in their lives between what, you know, Bernie and Ernie do, um, if either of them is responsible, they're both responsible, but clearly Ernie isn't, or so the idea goes. And so Bernie, because he's determined, he must not be responsible either. And so this is also, you know, fits that schema that we were just looking at, concludes that compatibilism is false or that natural incompatibilism is true. 